I look, man, I'm gonna keep it as straight up as a stop sign with y'all. Sensual pleasures will never equate to spiritual ecstasy. Yes, sir, let me say that again. Sensual pleasures, sensory pleasures will never equate to spiritual ecstasy. And you might be wondering, man, is this another new type of drug, spiritual ecstasy? Yes, it is a drug, but it's not a type of drug that you will get out externally. It's something that you get high off of with your own supply. So without further ado, let's break this bitch down real quick like a brick for y'all. Now, within this world, within this quote-unquote matrix, the Maya, the illusion, whatever you want to label it as, everything is designed to give you cheap sources of dopamine, cheap little fixes of quote-unquote happiness, of pleasure, when in reality, Every time you're doing that, you're essentially cashing in your chips when you only got $5, when you only got $10, when you only got $15. You're not letting things actually build up to the point where you can cash in for spiritual ecstasy and then gain 100x, 200x, 300x of your return. Because every time you decide to let the senses, not even you decide, it's whenever the senses want to go and enjoy this type of pleasure, this little dopamine fix, since most majority of people out there in the world are slaves to their senses, they essentially just start to deplete and degenerate what life truly has to offer. What life can truly give you? What is a true sense of pleasure? What is a true sense of fulfillment? You just lower the bar. You lower the standards of what it means to actually be filled with joy, filled with pleasure, filled with overall happiness. If you think scrolling on TikTok is a high level pleasure, if you think eating fast food is a high level pleasure, if you think just jerking it to porn is a high level pleasure. If you think just hooking up with a random girl on a one night, one night stand is a high level pleasure, man, you got it all twisted and you got it all the way fucked up, bro. And I don't blame you because again, like I just said in the beginning, this entire quote unquote material world is based off of that. It runs off of that. That's like an oil to its machine. It's what it's what's the fuel that keeps it pumping. It's only for those men who see it for what it is, understand it for what it is, and realize that they must transcend above it. Not because they, they don't want any pleasures in life. Not because they don't want to have any joy in life, any happiness in life. They just understand that there's a higher level of that waiting for them if they just remain patient if they just are able to transcend the limitations of their physical senses and go directly to the source of all, AKA the spirit, AKA the soul. That's where the true fulfillment and true joy and true spiritual ecstasy resides. All that other stuff, it's, it's, it's not quote unquote evil or bad, but it's not the higher, higher upper echelon of this experience we call life. So why just cheap, cheap yourself out? It's like, okay, man, I need a car. I need a car to drive around and I need it to just be a functioning, good vehicle. But for the people out there that are so impatient, they'll go buy a uh, car that's just jank, that's broken down, that's been in a car wreck before. They'll just go ahead and buy that and it's cheaper, cheaper money, money wise, but guess what? It doesn't last long. So they gotta go buy another one and another one and another one and another one. When they could have just waited, stacked up their money and got the actual car that they've always wanted that will last for an eternity, that will last for their entire lifetime that will actually produce the results that they want. They don't have to go through the headaches of getting this car, getting that car, getting this car, going to the mechanic shop because this fucked up, going to the, the uh, auto detailer shop because all the paint screwed up because you bought it like that. Hopefully you're picking up what I'm putting down, man. The same analogy is applicable to your overall life. 
Don't go for that jank ass pleasure. Yes, it's there. Yes, it's cheaper. Yes, it's more readily available. But save up. Save up and go straight to the source of what you actually want. That spiritual ecstasy. Even though that you might have not experienced this before, your soul yearns for it. Your soul has a affinity towards this feeling, towards this state of mind, towards this overall uh, beingness. This is what it's meant to actually embody. Not, okay, I get a little pleasure from watching TikTok videos or this and that. That's not what you're brought here to do. You're brought here to feel and experience something much greater than that. You're just cheaping yourself out. Go for the supercar. Don't go for the broken down minivan. Even though it's cheaper, even though it's readily available to you, even though you can get it right now, look beyond it. This is why it's so important as a man to embody and instill a mindset of delayed gratification, a long-term mindset. Because if you always do things for the short term, for the short term little spikes of dopamine, you're never going to be able to actually ascend to your highest potential. Because that requires you to look and plan three, four, seven, six, nine, ten, eleven, twelve steps ahead. Like you're playing chess out there. 3D chess, 4D chess, fuck that actually, 5D chess. Come on, man, are you, you picking up what the fuck I'm putting down? You gotta plan your moves in a, in, a, in accordance to your actual goals that you wanna get to. Not the, the mini milestones, not the little checkpoints, but the actual goal. That's what a lot of people are missing. A lot of men are missing in today's day and age. They have little checkpoints that they want to reach, little milestones that they want to reach, but they don't ever have the full picture, the finished product that they have in mind. Because all these small little checkpoints, these milestones of, okay, I'm going to make X amount of money a month. Oh, I'm going to get this girl. I'm going to do this. I'm going to do that. It's all materially based and society pushes that upon you. That's not your inner vision. That's not your inner dharmic duty, your spiritual duty that you were brought here to accomplish. Those checkpoints and those milestones should not be the goal. They should be what they are, checkpoints and milestones. And even in a deeper sense, tools and stepping stones to get you to that state of spiritual ecstasy. If you make X amount of money, that's great. But is that the end goal? No, use that money, use it as a tool to help not only yourself, the people around you and all that good stuff, but also to expand and unlock doors to be able to experience higher stages of life. Open yourself up to new experiences. Open yourself up to just overall expanding your perspective. Not hoarding away like, oh man, I made the, I made the, the end goal of making X, X amount of money. Use it, it's an energy. Everything is just flowing through the universe. And the more you start to realize this, the more you're going to start seeing these things as stepping stones, as tools, like we just said. That's going to help you ascend up this ladder, aka Jacob's ladder, if you want to call it that, to the state of spiritual ecstasy, towards the divine nectar that flows only from within, aka self-realization that requires you to go on the path of self-mastery. This is what we talk about here, man. Self-mastery leads to self-realization. A true sense of fulfillment, a true sense of knowing who you are and more importantly, what you are, what you were brought here to do. What is the actual spiritual path that you were brought here to uh, follow along? The dharmic duty you were brought here to fulfill. The actual mission in life that you were brought here to accomplish. As a man, if you're on that path, you can give you, you can, someone can give you all these different quote unquote side quests that will bring you pleasure, but you're not going to even be phased by that because you know, you have a deep sense, a deep intuitive gut feeling that this is what I'm supposed to do. Even if it gets difficult, even if it takes forever, even if it just comes all these hardships, my soul, my heart is literally yearning for it. Not in a desire sense, I have to get it. It's literally like, this is what I'm brought here to do. This is my calling. And if you haven't had that sense yet, man, it's because 
all this junk around you is distracting you away from actually realizing what that is. Like I've talked about so much before, treat this whole concept of getting to your core purpose like an onion. There's a bunch of layers to the onion, but you need to peel them away to get to the core. The matrix, the mind, the illusion, the physical world, all this shit society just force feeds you is just adding on more layers. So you open up one layer, but it just comes back because they give you something else to do, something else to focus on. They rob your attention, they rob your focus and direct it towards their agendas. And what does it all surround? It surrounds into the concept of sensual pleasures, carnality, consumerism, all that stuff that's pulling you away and robbing your uh, innate, just overall vitality, vigor, intelligence, all that stuff as a man, away from your actual direction in life, away from your actual spiritual evolution, away from your actual spiritual realization or self-realization journey. It really is that simple, but it's also very complex at the same time because there's so many different angles this is coming at you from. Yet, it's when you start to see this, when you start to realize this, when you start to feel this from within, that man, I was brought here to do more, that I'm quote unquote tired of just being a slave to my senses, is when the flip, when the switch will finally, uh, when the, when you actually start to flip the switch, my bad, when you actually be able to flip that switch and change to towards an overall different type of paradigm, a different type of perspective, that's actually congruent towards your actual highest potential, to actually your higher self. You're getting closer and closer to embodying that. The more you become a slave to the senses, the less you become closer towards the highest potential, that peak pinnacle of your uh, existence. The more you get closer and closer and uh, bond more and more to the lower self, the animalistic side of you. And it's not evil, it's not bad, don't think anything like that. It's just what it is. What do you want your life to be catered towards? Your lower self or your higher self? A lot of people when I ask that right now in their heads will be saying, yeah, my higher self. But your actions aren't in congruence to that. They don't correlate with that saying. They don't correlate with that uh, state of consciousness. Because you're so easily manipulated towards serving those senses serving them as a slave as a butler master please let me be able to sleep another day you know what i mean the more you just keep doing this shit, man the more the senses the animalistic side of you the lower self gets a confidence boost gets an ego boost and that ego boost and that confidence boost makes it think that it's a dictator. Take back control, bro. Take back control. If this physical vessel, which is supposed to be an instrument, a tool for you to realize your highest faculties, to realize God, if you want to say that, is actually going against your goals, then man, there's a lot of shit that we got to fix before you think about this, this, and that. Before you think about getting a girlfriend, before you think about uh, getting a million dollars, man. If you're not able to actually control and direct your body, this vehicle, this vessel, to actually assist you and become an actual um, aid towards your spiritual development, then man, what the fuck do you even have this for? That's what I'm saying. Society, all this shit around you is using your biology against you. And you don't even know what the fuck's going on. Because you've equated sensual pleasures as the pinnacle of all life's experiences. You don't realize that there's another level called spiritual ecstasy that far outweighs that. You can't even compare them. Your mind can't even fathom the type of bliss you'll be feeling. You just have to experience it face on head to head and for the people out there who have experienced just a glimpse of it a little taste of it a little motherfucking sliver of it you'll you'll understand what i'm saying comment down below 
and explain it for the people who have not yet reached those states. I'm not saying the people who haven't reached those states that you'll never get to those points. But what I am saying is this is the first step to that, especially the first step to that to doing it internally. Because for the people who have had those experiences, you might have had them quote unquote externally with external help with external substances, if you want to call it that. Ah, the psychedelics, this and that, you know what I mean? But you can do it internally, and it's even going to be better internally. Pranayama, meditation, these deep stages, and these deep yogic tools to help you awaken your spiritual organs, your psychic glands, if you want to call it that. The pineal gland, the stuff that's going up in there, your third eye, all that stuff. Awakening the chakras, like all that stuff is legit, man, and it's backed up by science. Like all these spiritual sciences should be as should be portrayed as legit and concrete as your quote unquote modern day science. It's just on a different level, on a more metaphysical level. And when you just get a little glimpse and a little taste of it, man, I'm telling you, there's no going back. There's no living a life of like just complete degeneracy, of just complete nonsensical vision or direction. What do I mean by that? Nonsensical vision or direction means that you get to be pulled this way by your emotions, that way by your emotions, up, down, upside down, backwards, forwards. Like you're just getting pulled wherever by the, by the reins of your senses. And I've talked about this before, how in uh, an ancient text, an ancient holy Hindu text, the Bhagavad Gita, which is, which is essentially the Bible of the Vedic philosophy, they have this concept where I broke this down on one of my first videos on the main channel, Fulati Fitness, if you want to go check that out, make sure you go run it up after this. Quality is awful. I look way different. I can barely speak to the camera, like just, just take that in mind. But the message behind it is the same as these ancient texts. So it's kind of funny how I kind of brought it into my own sense without ever reading this book. So once I read the book, I was like, damn, I, I low key think the same exact thing, but it's just a different little tweaks here and there. But within the book, um, the allegory, the metaphor of the chariot, the allegory and the metaphor of the chariot is your vessel, your vessel your overall beingness, where the senses are the horses, the chariot itself or the, the, the actual cart itself is the body, the reins is the mind, what actually directs the horses around, that pulls the body in different directions. That is being held by your soul, your spirit. And on the side of it, in the Bhagavad Gita, the person actually holding in this and that is Arjuna, the, the, the devotee of Krishna. Krishna is the supreme personality of Godhead. Just think of it as God. That's right next to him. Almost like a GPS guiding him towards the state of spiritual ecstasy, towards self-realization through the path of self-mastery. That's his GPS. That's the inner guide. That's the inner guru. That's the higher self that we always talk about. Yet, if the senses, the horses, are not listening to the mind, the body is going to be pulled in whatever direction. Oh, I'm horny, I'm going to go fucking wank it. Oh, I'm fucking pissed off, I'm going to go cause a tantrum. Oh, I'm sad, I'm just going to be depressed sitting in my bed all day. If the, the horses just can pull the fucking cart around, guess what, man? It doesn't matter who's holding the goddamn reins. It doesn't matter, because you've lost control. And that's the same thing with this. If you equate sensual pleasures towards your actual goals, it's going to run rampant. Those horses are just going to be fed with that ego, the, that, that dictatorship, thinking that, no, motherfucker, I'm the boss. I get to pull us this way, this way, and that way. If you ever had a dog or you've walked a dog before, you've probably had experience where you had a good walk with the dog, where you're walking the dog. But if you have... A crazier dog, a dog that's out of control, the dog is fucking walking you. You know what I mean if, you, if you're picking up what I'm putting down. The dog is fucking walking you. It's not the other way around. Like the dog I got right here, Lola, my uh, uh, dopamine husky, 
she used to be crazy. She used to fucking take off her leash, run this way, run. And guess what? I have to go fucking follow her, go find her, and make sure she doesn't get lost and stuff like that. I wasn't going on the walk that I wanted to, that I actually planned to. She this just pulled me this and that way. And the same thing applies to the senses. But within the uh, first video on the main channel I talked about, this is, gives a more modern perspective, you want to call it that. The mind is a steering wheel, the body is a car, and the soul is the one in the driver's seat. Yet again, society can program you to the point where you are the one in the passenger seat. Societal programmings are the one actually causing the mind to pull this way, pull that way, etc., etc., etc. So kind of same analogy, but just in different little uh, differences here and there. But that kind of will give you a perspective of what I mean. That if the senses, sensual pleasures are your peak pinnacle in life, guess what? You're never going to go to your actual highest potential. You'll never actually experience what life can truly offer to you on all planes of reality. You're kind of just blocking yourself off to the material world and that's it. Never realizing that there's something much deeper than this. And this is what's going on in the world today. In the Vedic philosophy, again, this is called Kali Yuga or Kal Yuga. A, and, uh, a time, a cycle within this cosmic uh, calendar, if you want to call it that, that is a representation of the increase in carnality and the decrease of spirituality. It works inversely. When spirituality is up, carnality is down. It gets into the golden ages where we see civilizations start to evolve on a deeper, on a much more accelerated path. Not just on the material and technological side, but actually on a humane side. They go from just being beasts or animals with fucking iPhones to actually godly figures, divine vessels for the universe to work out its will to continue the evolution of man. Kali Yuga, Kali Yuga, this is what we're going through right now. People just think we're just a skin of bag and bones. Or a bag of skin and bones, my bad. Like that's all they think we are. And it's until some traumatic thing happens to them or this and that really shakes up their mind, shakes up their perspective and shakes up their overall um, just way of life that they'll make that, sh make that change. It's usually not through their own doing. It's usually through an external meme that really just fucks their shit up. That really just tears up their perspective on what the, this whole experience of life is. But you don't have to go through that. Messages like this, messages like the book we just broke down, the Bhagavad Gita, messages like stuff you see on the main channel, messages you see within the Patreon community. Shout out to the fucking private Patreon community. If you want access to deeper insights, deeper knowledge, and deeper information like stuff like this that we talk about on this channel, on the main channel, and all that good stuff, go and check out the links posted in the pinned comment of this video because in the private Patreon community, we got access to exclusive content, breaking out ancient texts, breaking out a lot of these different types of concepts from biohacking, fitness, psychology, spirituality, all that good stuff in a much more in-depth and uh, information-packed sense. There's also access to our full guides, guides when it comes to how to take psychedelics properly, how to fast, how to break out of the NPC mindset, all that good stuff, as well as um, our cult lectures and access and invitations to the monthly masterminds. We're doing two masterminds a month now. This is where you get to hop on live calls with me and the private inner circle group chat where we start to discuss a lot of these different types of things and be around a community of like men and men who are also on this path of self mastery who also have the pinnacle of their potential directed towards true self-realization and spiritual ecstasy so if you think you're someone on that path and you don't want to think that you're crazy because you're surrounded by a bunch of people who are quote unquote npcs and just are in that dark stage or in that dark mindset of kali yuga where they don't think beyond the material and physical senses then this is a place for you check out the links posted in the pinned comment of this video because in there you'll also be finding uh links to 
book one-on-one -on -one consultations with me, a one-time call where we just break down things and uh, address any problems that you got, give you advice on how you can keep accelerating on your path, as well as application forms to our personalized one-on-one -on -one coaching programs. All that good stuff is, again, posted in the pinned comment of this video. I'm talking all that good stuff, the free community Discord server, weekly newsletters, all that stuff, man. So make sure you go check it out. But within those types of uh, pieces of content and the things that the services I provide, all that good stuff, you start to realize, you start to understand, and I actually start to piece the puzzle up together using the tools that we break down to actually be able to, again, peel back those layers of the onion and get right to the core. The quicker you do that, the quicker you'll be able to, quote unquote, have your second birth or your spiritual Re, uh, rebirth process, rejuvenation process, regeneration process. In a uh, verse in the Bible, Jesus said this, For truly I say unto you, until one is reborn again, they will not be able to see, see, remember that, see the kingdom of God. You will never be able to experience, be able to actually view and perceive what these higher states of consciousness can actually allow you to, to get to what these actual states of spiritual ecstasy and bliss can provide you on this game of life. It's only when you go through that spiritual awakening process, which is your spiritual birth, your second birth, where these things start to click. Maybe you already had that, maybe you haven't, maybe it's about to happen, maybe it's this kind of ignited it, I don't know. But what I'm telling you is that this type of concept is seen all throughout humanity, all throughout the religious and spiritual philosophies of life. And if you're a man that's truly on this path of wanting to embody their highest self on all aspects of life, we're not just talking about the physical where you get jacked and you got a lot of money and you can get all these girls and blah, 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 whatever, that's cool. But if you want to actually keep ascending, keep going deeper, keep going further, you got to understand that the spiritual phenomenon of life, the physical realm of life, I mean the spiritual realm of life, is what you is the missing link, what you've always been missing out on. So like I talked about before, like psychology is a prerequisite to, to spirituality, is because the mind is the connecting node in between the spiritual realms and the material world. That's literally the, the layer that kind of bridges the gap in between the two. You can be physically in the best position possible. But in order for the mind to truly expand and grasp to the spiritual realms, to the highest realms of reality, you need to devote yourself to this path. I'm not saying this is a cult where you got to fucking like bow down and be like self-mastery. Like, no, bro, this is just fucking the next stages of quote unquote self-improvement the next stages of quote unquote, bettering yourself. Because you're going deeper, going more and more, you have more substance actually address. It's not just, okay, get jacked, get, uh, get, get muscles, get money, get hoes. You transcend beyond that, man. You transcend beyond that. And then when you transcend beyond that, your priorities shift from sensual pleasures to spiritual ecstasy and this is why I, I'll, I'll break down a whole nother video on this within the second channel um how a lot of these quote-unquote alpha males and all these people that you think are successful in life are still slaves to the quote-unquote matrix even andrew tate even all these people that talk about this shit, they're still slaves to the matrix but not just the the uh kind of the corporate matrix if you want to call it that the societal matrix, but the sensory matrix. They're still slaves to the flesh. As a man, if your flesh can fucking control you, you are not a true man. That's what I think a true man is. They all talk about fucking masculine and you masculine, you gotta provide, you gotta do this. That's great. That's awesome, that's beautiful. But if you're able to provide and still do all this stuff, yet you're still a slave to your flesh, you let your dick kind of direct you towards wherever you want in life. You let your anger pull you towards this direction and that direction. Are you a real man? 
No, the divine man is the true man. A man who has complete control over his vessel. Not only does he have complete control over his vessel, he actually dedicates it and actually submits it towards being a vessel for God. And guess what? The men who do that attain the state of spiritual ecstasy I'm talking about. They get to the highest point of this human experience. Those are the ones, not the trillionaires, billionaires. You could be a millionaire, trillionaire, zillionaire and never get to that point because you don't have that focus. But you also could be a billionaire, trillionaire, zillionaire, have that focus and get to that point where all that money doesn't even mean shit to you. This is why, like, a lot of people, when they see the Eastern mystics, the yogis, the sages, the saints, kind of renounce society and kind of go do their own shit, they're like, man, they must really hate themselves. This is like torture. They can't go to the movies. They can't do the Because, bro, they see and they felt something much more pleasurable, much more joyful, much more satisfying. Then all that bullshit, eating popcorn at the fucking movies, go, having fast food, watching porn, chasing women around just to have a one night stand. They felt something much deeper than that. They're like, man, I, I don't want to play that game anymore. I want to play this game. Imagine you had a fucking one version of Call of Duty, the oldest version of Call of Duty. It's like, whatever, it's a little fun. Having a little pleasure. Now you jump straight into the, the, the latest generation with the graphics, stuff like that. That's the top tier. You're going to go want to play that more, right? Am I right? Like, am I... Are you picking up what I'm putting down? Once you experience the higher level, you don't want to go back to the lower level. Once you experience being healthy, you don't want to go back to being unhealthy. Once you experience having money, you don't want to go back to being broke. Once you experience spiritual ecstasy, you don't want to go back to the sensual pleasures. Come on, man. Connect the dots, piece up the puzzle. I'm breaking it down for you as straight up as possible, bro. Let this stuff marinate in your mind. Let it let, just meditate upon that. Sensual pleasures will never equate to spiritual ecstasy. That's a high level, man. We, we're going for the higher self. Might as well aim for the higher pursuits, higher goals higher faculties that actually produce this, that actually make it happen. So all in all, man, as you go throughout life, keep this in mind. Keep this in mind. Have that long-term mindset. Have that delayed gratification mindset to be able to look past the sensory pleasures in the short term and look straight to the spiritual ecstasy that's going to take some time to get to. It's going to take some dedication to get to because you need to master yourself in order to have self-realization and experience that spiritual ecstasy. But it's an ongoing process. And throughout that process, you'll be in a state of flow, a state of fulfillment, a state of bliss that will continue to aid you along the way. Again, like we said in the Bhagavad Gita, the God, Krishna, whatever you want to call it, is along with you on the, on the whole journey. I'm not with you on the journey. I'm along that own journey. I'm looking at you like, hey, motherfucker, good shit, man, good shit. Maybe you're a little ahead of me. Maybe I'm a little ahead of you. We're on different lanes, different pathways, but we're still going up to the same, same uh, pinnacle, and I'll see you up there. But all this stuff I talk about on this channel, the main channel, the Patreon, with the people I work on or work with one-on-one, uh, -on -one, either with the consultations or my coaching programs, all I do is, again, Give them the tools to be able to take back control of those reins and then connect back their GPS, connect back their God guidance, their inner guidance, the inner guru to help them go on their own path. I don't know where your path is. Nobody does other than you. You just have been blocked off because you think that sensory pleasures are the end goal. Once you take back control from these societal programmings and kick that motherfucker out like some GTA shit, you get back control of the reins of the horses. They're not pulling you no more. That dog is not walking you no more. You're walking the dog. You're actually directing those horses towards the path you want to go to. And guess what? A lot of people are like, well, I don't know where to go. Again, you awaken those spiritual senses to the point where you connect to that intuitive sense, the Ajna Chakra, if you want to call it that, the third eye, pineal gland, whatever you want to 
metaphorically label it as that gives you that direct connection, that intuitive insights to help you on that path, guide you on that path. God is directing, to, directing you and assisting you and acting as your personal trainer or GPS towards the pinnacles of life. Again, all, all I can do is help you break out of those chains, break out of those psychological barriers and give you the tools to be able to connect back to your own inner guide, your own inner guru, your highest self. At that point, you off to the races, bro. I'll see you up there. Maybe I'll see you on the way, what's up my boy? But at the end of the day, we're just gonna meet up and have a nice little kickback, a nice little party when we're actually at the top of the mountain. Where we're actually embodying that spiritual state of ecstasy. Not no fucking ecstasy like we're at a rave, we're having a divine rave, not an EDM rave where we're rolling off Molly, rolling off yeah, ecstasy, but we're rolling off divine nectar, divine ecstasy, spiritual ecstasy. We're having a godly rave, you know what I mean? But there it is, man. At the end of the day, sensual pleasures, sensory pleasures will never equate to, again, spiritual ecstasy. It's been your boy out here in the field, in the flesh, dropping y'all that game so you guys can make these gains. And I'm out of here. Peace.